What's digging? We've got a MacBook Pro here, an A1707. This guy's in for a pair after losing its display. It was kind of going on the edge for a bit, but one day just cut out. Originally thought it was a T-Con issue, but looking at it straight away, I found Flexgate. So I'm gonna walk you guys through what Flexgate is, how it's caused and how to fix it, and then hopefully get a dub at the end of this. So let's just jump straight into it. Before we jump in the repair, I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about this guy and what this guy's function is and the rest of it. So obviously we've got a pretty clean Mac, nothing else is the issue. Here's the T-Con. This is where the cable connects from the T-Con to the board. What actually happens along here is we've got these data cables, some power cable here, another power cable and this data cable here. This guy here carries your 55 volt for your display and your five volt for your camera. Having a look at this perspective, everything looks pretty good, even this cable right here. With how this one's designed, as the display opens up, actually see that those cables start to bend. And as they do that to allow the display to open, this cable right here, we can see it's not having a good time and it's actually broken. So because of that, we end up with no 55 volt going to the display. Probably the camera doesn't work as well. Maybe, maybe it does, but there's no point when you don't have a display anyway. So really it's a design issue. This is widely known. I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on this, but this is a no nonsense tutorial. So I'm gonna jump into it. We're gonna remove the display from the actual housing. And then I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how I actually fix it and hopefully provide you guys some value. So assuming you've got the display outside the housing, we've got the T-Con nice and exposed. You can picture that the T-Con sits here like this along the body with the display closed. And as this one starts open, the T-Con actually turns. And that's where you'll see that the cable's nice and flat. And as it starts to turn, that brake reveals itself right there. So I'll do that again, nice close with light on it. So it's a bit easy to see, even now you can see it, but it's nice and flat. And as it turns, that brake, oh my God, let's get a good view. You can see it's broken right there, come on. Now, because we've got a break in the cable, we've got a few different ways of fixing this. We can remove this bezel to expose the connection on the other side of the T-Con where it actually connects to the display. We could then replace the cable with a new one like this, or we could also shave off a bit of this cable where it's broken in the seam here and we could run some jumpers. But I don't like to do that because the cable's already broken in the first place, so it's probably gonna break again if we do it that way. So with those two options out the way, not impossible, but in my opinion, not the safest, fastest, etc. We're trying to do things risk-free. We're gonna take this new cable, we're gonna cut it with a little tiny bit extra length in it to then cut the one that's broken, add the two with some jumper wire, and then not only do we solve the problem of it flexing and breaking again in the future, but then we've got a new cable and then we can plug it all in together and then hopefully we've got a solution. So this is enough of a lead up to it. Let's just jump into it and get cracking with the repair. So once we have this guy disconnected and removed from the T-Con, we can then feed him around the bottom. The idea here is to actually have him nice and flat so we can not only cut him evenly, but then when we've got the replacement cable next to him, we have a clear way of being able to run those jumpers and it's not just gonna move around and be all funny. So I'm need to tell you guys how to suck eggs, but these are used for CPU work. Uh, they're just stencils. I've just taken a bunch of them, stacked them around each other. They will start to move around, but I've used this bit of tape to hold them together. I then take another bit of tape to then wrap and secure the flex cable. So then that way it won't move while I'm working on it. That way it's nice and level and we can just get straight into the repair, finally. So what we're actually doing here is coming in and we're gonna remove some of the coating from the flex cable that's broken. It goes without saying, if you haven't done this work before, I would highly recommend that you don't attempt this for the first time on something that you're trying to fix. Have a bit of a go with another flex cable, with multiple ones, whatever, as long as you get a bit of a knack for removing the coating from an actual flex cable so you know how hard you've got to go and obviously the kind of dexterity and finesse that you need to be able to make this happen. Something that I struggled with a lot when I started doing this kind of work is not using the right tools or I was using the right tools, but they just simply were dull, weren't up to scratch. You need good tools to be able to do this. And not only that, to make it easy and you're not teaching yourself bad habits. With that one out of the way, we can actually see where the physical crack is now. The next step here is to come in with something sharp like a razor blade will do fine, slice the cable off. And again, it's really obvious where the crack is. All I'm doing now is adding some more room. So I've got heaps of that trace exposed to run some jumpers from the old one to the new one. And then I'm just gonna do one last cut to remove the bit that's broken and make sure it's nice and squared off even so it'll be easy to connect the new cable to the old one. And with that one out of the way, obviously we've already moved on to the new cable. We're just gonna expose some of those traces again to do what we did in the other step, but this one's just gonna be a little bit easier because we're obviously free, we're not attached to the screen anymore. You'll also notice when you do this yourself, the factory cable acts different removing the coating compared to the aftermarket one. 
But this is also why I say practice before you get into it because you will notice a different feel depending on what you're working on as goes with anything. Assuming you've got the new one all prepped up, we're just gonna come in with a little bit of flux. We'll pin down the flex cable and then we're just gonna come in and tin up those traces, add some solder to them. I've definitely struggled with this part in the past. Recently, I've just bought some new soldering tips. It's made my life a hell of a lot easier. So again, use proper tools. It will make your life so much easier. It goes without saying, look at what you've done. Make sure nothing is bridged together. The guys on either end, the far thick ones, they, are, they can be bulgy and touch the what looks like to be the traces next to them. It's all ground, it's all fine. We're then gonna bring in our new flex cable, which we've prepped up, and we're gonna line it up nice and square with the old one. We wanna put the new cable underneath the old cable, that way it has a little bit of support and it's not just purely connected with the jumpers. We're then gonna use either end first of the ground connections of it, cause it's a little bit thicker, to connect it and hold it steady with the new cable. Once we've done that, we're just gonna move on and continue to use like a brushing kind of sweeping motion to connect what we can from the old one to the new one, purely with solder. It's not what you're trying to aim to do, but it just helps to hold everything straight and together. The end result should look something like this. And now all that's left is to come in with some of our jumper wire. I use 0.01 millimeter diameter wire to do this. And we're just gonna start off by tacking it on one end to the other. I always find it easy to the thicker one first and move backwards from there. So moving on to the other traces, the one thing extra that I will mention here is as I'm adding one end to the other, I'm also like running the jumper completely as flat as possible and then dragging my iron across to try and keep no slack there and have it like more like bulgy and supportive of the actual connection. So it's not just gonna like move around as the screen opens and closes and eventually break again. And then we're just gonna rinse and repeat that for every single trace, one bit over the other. Obviously be mindful of the work that you've done right next to it. You don't wanna sit there and knock another jumper that you've just done because it's really easy to pick them up. Don't get frustrated. It's all about practice. It's all about giving it time. Just don't push it. Never force anything. You're gonna cause more damage than repair. We can then admire our end result looking pretty schmick. Now all that's left is to take a bit of tape like this and we'll just cut off a small section like this. And then we just wanna place it right where the seam connects the two pieces together. The idea to doing this is so when you've got the two pieces connected together, it doesn't have a weak point or at least it still will have the weak point, but hopefully the tape stops that from breaking. And of course, we don't have a warranty repair because we're trying to fix things, not get it back a second time over for our own shit mistakes. And with all that out of the way, now all that's left is to chuck it together and see if we are successful. Chuck it into power and see what the go is. Well, that sucks. But we've got a working display other than this issue and it's gone. So the other issue with this design is how the cables actually wrap underneath the bezel of the display. Not only does that put tension on that weak ass cable that produces the 55 volt for the screen to work, you end up with debris building up over time, whether it's dust, tiny little bits of rock, whatever it is, and eventually those bits collect and have the opportunity to punch through, cause dents, whatever happens to the data cables, and then you end up with those lines and because they're in such a tight spot, it's really hard to fix. So I might give it a crack. We're just gonna have to see what the customer says and hopefully get the dub. Obviously it works once it's on, but it's a pretty good sign that she's cooked, mate. So bit of a half-baked repair, but you get that in the big jobs. On to the next one, hopefully. Catch you then.